This series, uh, Listen to Jesus, is one that was planned, uh, like all of our series in 2021, back in November. Uh, one of the suggestions that came from the congregation was focusing more on the gospel readings and the lessons and the words of Jesus and what he's calling us to say, which is always a good suggestion, but I think it's especially timely now, and for that I'll give thanks and glory to God. So in our gospel lesson for today, we have the baptism of Jesus. This event that is really important in the life of Jesus and in the life of Christianity. John the Baptist, a relative of Jesus, cousin or something like it, is out in the wilderness and he is baptizing people. He is washing them in the waters of the River Jordan, calling them to repentance, to revival, and all the rest. And as uh, he is going along, he tells the people that I, John the Baptist, I'm not the main event. I'm just a warm-up act. There's someone coming after me who is going to do even greater things, going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I'm not worthy to untie his sandals and on and on. And because things move very quickly in the Gospel of Mark, Mark, you can read it in about 30 minutes. So, and then immediately Jesus shows up on the scene and he's baptized which reminds us of our call to baptism. It's a mark of the beginning of his public ministry. And in that moment, when he comes up out of the water, the heavens open, the spirit descends like a dove, and the voice of God says, You are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. It is a reminder to all of us the importance of centrality of Jesus in Scripture, but it was a revelation, an epiphany, to the people standing there that this was no mere prophet, no mere teacher, no mere wandering healer. It was important for them to hear that, just as it's important for us to hear it today. And that's why we have this holy day, the baptism of Jesus, and this story every single year. We might read it from different Gospels, but every year we come back to the story of Jesus being baptized in the Jordan. It was important in Jesus' time and day because he wasn't the only influence, the only voice that was out there. There was the voice of the Roman Empire that was all throughout the land. They were the rulers in Palestine and in most of the known world. And so that voice of empire, that voice of power and money and fame, that voice of violence and adventure, if you wanted to join up and join the Legionnaires, you might be able to lift yourself up out of poverty or just see exotic places and build a whole new life for yourself. There was the voice of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the different religious sects of Judaism. And then there was also the voice of the Zealots who were there to burn it all down, basically, and throw Rome out, whatever it took. And so in the midst of all these voices, God takes a moment, a holy moment, in front of all those people who were there by the River Jordan to remind people that it is Jesus who is God's son, and it is Jesus with whom God is well pleased. At the end of this season of Epiphany, we have a sort of replay of this scene in the Transfiguration. They're not in the river this time, they're up on the side of the mountain, but again the heavens open, and again there's a voice from the clouds that says, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased, and this time God emphasizes, listen to him. And so that's why we have this series called Listen to Jesus. Because throughout this time, we have new revelations about who Jesus is, reminders for us who have been reading Scripture, but also that overarching message that we are called to listen to Jesus because his voice matters more than the rest. Yes, there is empire and there is Caesar, but Caesar doesn't get the acknowledgement of God. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Velas, they don't have the heavens parting for them and a voice speaking from heaven. Hey, these are my sons with them. No, only Jesus gets that treatment. Only Jesus gets that holy, otherworldly, powerful endorsement from on high. And I think just as Romans, excuse me, just as Israelites and Romans and the rest of the world needed to be reminded back then of how important it is to listen to Jesus, we are called to listen to Jesus as well. Because we have so many other competing voices for our time and our ears. Right? We have voices that hit us from every single angle. 
We see hundreds of advertisements a day through the wonderful smartphones that we all carry in our pockets, through TVs, through radio, through any screen that gets put in front of us, even at the gas station, right? You go and you fill up your gas tank. There's an advertisement staring you right in the face. There are voices that are calling you. And there are still the old voices of empire, of fame, of fortune, of violence, of adventure, of lust, of all those old sins, and a bunch of new ones too. There are voices that call us to anger, to rage, to division, to hatred. And in the midst of that, we need to be reminded that it is God himself who says, Jesus and Jesus alone is his son. With him, God is well pleased. And we are reminded that we are called to listen to him. We saw and heard some of those other voices speak this week. We saw a group of people who decided that violence and destruction was the way forward. They broke into the Capitol. There was mayhem. There was fear. There was violence. There was anger. There was rage. And there was death. Five people died, including a Capitol police officer who was pretty much beaten to death. Some of those people were there because they're just hateful people. Some of them were literal Nazis. And I don't say that like how people call you a Nazi because they disagree with you. I mean, these are literal people who wear the shirts, have the tattoos, are proud to be called white nationalists and part, proud to be part of a hate group. They were a small group, but they were there. There are other people who were there because they enjoy the violence. They had guns, they had Molotov cocktails, they had pipe bombs. There were people who were there because they were just angry. They were angry about the way things are going, angry about the results of the election, angry about the direction of the country, and somehow they thought this action would change things. And then there were people there who I'm willing to bet that on an average day would never think, you know what I want to do today? I'm going to make a federal crime. I'm going to break through this Capitol window and just go flying in there and fight some cops and whoever else. But caught up in the madness of the mop, they went. In all of those cases, to one degree or another, people listen to the voices of anger, of violence, of rage, of hatred, and said, that's the way to go. That's the voice I want to follow. That's the one I want to listen to. And this isn't the first time either. This isn't the first time that people have bought into the voices of violence and destruction and decided that the only way to save a neighborhood is to burn it down. The only way for justice is through violence, that have chosen rioting over reconciliation, that have chosen the voice of hatred over love, and have listened to the voices that say, you know, your neighbors, they're not, they're not actually your neighbors, they're actually your enemies. And what it has led to is not surprising. Voices of rage and division and hatred, they lead to more rage and hatred and division. And if we keep listening to those voices, they are going to destroy us. And listen, I, I don't care about your political persuasion. I don't care who you voted for. I don't care about your political worldview. I don't care about any of that. If we keep listening to these voices of anger and rage and hatred and division, they will destroy us as a nation and as communities. We see this from history. There's an example not too long after Jesus walked the earth in about 70 AD. There were these group of zealots that were there in Jesus' day. But they came to power and they decided it was time to go and they decided to burn it all down. And so they kicked Rome out temporarily and they brought freedom to their homeland. But that freedom ended really quickly and really tragically. Rome showed back up, as it always did in that day, with many more divisions. Jerusalem was burned to the ground. The temple was destroyed. And as Jesus said, not one stone left upon the other. Those rebels were, guard, were uh, chased back into a mountainside fortress, and they all died there. Because that's what happens when even well-meaning, good people listen to the voices of division. Listen to the voices of rage and violence and anger. So we need to be reminded to listen to Jesus. We need to be reminded of that Jordan River moment. Because guess what? 
It's still only Jesus that gets the holy endorsement from God. It's still only Jesus that has the voice from heaven say, this is my son, with him I am well pleased. It is only Jesus who has God himself saying, listen to him. No one else. No one else is the Messiah that we need. No one else is the Messiah that God has anointed. No one else is the Savior that can lead us to a better world. It is Christ alone. So that's why we're continued to call to listen. And here's the good news. If we can actually listen to Jesus, if we put his voice before all others, then it helps to shape the rest of our lives in such a way that even something like politics, which I know is a hot topic and nothing we'd like to talk about, but using the voice and the teaching of Jesus, even something like that can become life-giving instead of divisive. Even something like talking about race and reconciliation and justice and peace garnered in the word of God and guarded guarded by the teachings of Jesus can be something that brings a community together instead of tearing it apart. God knew this. And that's why he reminded us of how important and how singular the voice of Christ was. And so it's timely to hear the story again. It's timely to be reminded That it is in Christ alone that we have hope for our future. And so we are called to hear that spirit that descended like a dove. We are called to hear that voice that came down and reminded us and said, This is my son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased. And we are called to remember that as people of God, as children of the Heavenly Father, As people baptized in the waters and word, we are called to listen to Jesus. Because that's the only hope that we have for a better life as individuals and a better life together. Amen.